again, my friend Colleen Kelly and my collaborator published a, a case report uh, beginning of this year when um, she had um, a patient who was um, a, a very thin, um, you know, very um, physically in shape lady who um, uh, received stool from her chubby daughter and despite all efforts and repeated weight loss pro program she gained over 70 pounds um, uh, within six months if I remember correctly after the fecal transplant and since we know that microbiota plays an important role in uh, metabolic and processes and, and possibly has an influence on our um, weight uh, this was a very interesting question or concern what she raised so I decided, well, I have nearly 300 patients in, th in my research database and we, um, we uh, recorded our um, donors' weight, BMI, and we just follow up on this. We um, randomly picked um, 72 patients. Uh, of these, 58 was willing to um, either complete the interview or we had reliable data in our um, uh, electronic medical uh, records and we could verify indeed the donors and BMI and so forth and um, initial weight and then we compared the uh, donors weight and BMI with the patient's weight following the fecal transplant. Obviously it was not a perfect study because we didn't check the patient's weight at six months, one year and so forth. So the patient's weight were checked at different intervals. We ended up analyzing 58 patient and donor pa pairs and we had um, about one quarter of patients, not just overweight but obese. These were patients selected or directed donors and you know, they didn't have anybody else in the family besides um, uh, an obese individual based upon the BMI criteria. And um, over 50% um, had lean donor and the rest had um, overweight donor. And to my greatest surprise, we did not find any correlation between weight changes and um, whether the donor was um, lean, overweight, or obese. So I would say that um, at least our data is reassuring in the fact that receiving a single fecal transplant will not make significant, will not result in significant vein changes. Uh, in a patient. I'm not sta uh, obviously, I cannot state that repeated fecal transplant or microbiota transfer will not um, elicit any changes in patient's BMI, but it was kind of reassuring to me that um, in our study at least we didn't find any um, changes in the patient's weight um, or tra even trend depending on the um, uh, um, the donor's original weight, whether they were lean, again, overweight, or obese. So what, what the message is from this small study is that um, obviously knowing what we know today that microbiota influences our um, weight or you know, some metabolic um, disorders are associated with our gut flora, I would advise that whenever we can, we should find a perfectly healthy lean individual. However, when the patient um, uh, is unable to identify uh, a perfect lean individual in the family, probably it's not going to hurt if, if the stool at least one time is coming from an overweight individual. I'm intrigued by um, other aspects of the fecal transplant. Obviously, I'm hoping that very soon, you know, C. diff is not going to be on our uh, most common nosocomial infection and with all the efforts that we're currently undertaking we will be able to reduce this. So I'm very interested in um, other aspects of fecal transplant such as looking into um, um, uh, treating multi-drug resistant organisms for example with fecal transplant, uh, treatment of IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, possibly irritable bowel syndrome. Very soon I'm hoping we're not, we will not use full spectrum uh, microbiota, you know, derived from the stool, but we will be able to use uh, targeted bacterial therapy when we certainly will uh, have better understanding of which bacteria play cru a crucial role, for example, in the treatment of C. diff and other diseases, and we'd rather be able to, um, tar to, to, um, to um, give targeted 
therapy, which is kind of a mega probiotic, right? When we can choose three, four, five, six um, uh, organisms and mix it to treat a certain disease. And that's called synthetic stool and will come um, in you know, all forms, so fully like um, acid resistant capsules, so we no longer will have to use frozen capsules, which we currently use, um, and, but can be administered in animal form. You know. But I think the way to go in the future certainly will be the synthetic stool, if you will, or targeted bacterial therapy and administered in you know, a pill or capsule form.